Joining me now is one of the report's authors, Nancy Limbaugh, who's the president of the United States Institute of Peace. Nancy, thanks very much for coming in. I have you here on this day, so I do want to ask you whether the recommendations that you make in your report might have helped prevent the kind of attack we've seen in Sri Lanka. You know, there will always be hate and the kind of hate that provokes the terror that you saw in Sri Lanka. I think the question is, will the recommendations enable Sri Lanka to prevent that ideology taking root and spreading and turning into cycles of even greater hatred. The, the task force that Congress directed U.S. Institute of Peace to conduct is looking at how to prevent extremism in fragile states by looking at the conditions of fragility, of fragile states where you have poor governance and a lack of a functioning state society compact, because those are the conditions that enable that kind of ideology to take root and gain recruits and even hold territory. Are you optimistic that we can do it? I mean, we've spent billions of dollars, as we said, since 9-11. People have been looking at this for nearly two decades now um, through a microscope, trying to understand how we can root out, how, how we can root out the causes of, of these kinds of attacks. We haven't managed to do it. Do you think we can? Well, I think we have to keep trying. And what this approach articulates is that we need to really have a shared understanding. Because often what happens is our, our military, our diplomatic, and our development efforts are not mm. aligned. And they, in fact, can undercut one another. And that what the three recommendations do is create that alignment, um, have uh, the potential for creating longer-term engagement, more sustained, that's in partnership with these fragile areas, and more iterative programming, understanding th these problems will not be solved in a couple of years. These are often generational. What's encouraging is that, similar to these recommendations, there are two bills moving through the U.S. House and Senate right now. So there is a convergence that's starting to happen that says we've got to try a different way. Nancy, the third of your recommendations that we read out there was the U.S. needs to pool international resources. I wonder how you envisage that working with the current administration in the White House, which seems to be less than multilateral in its thinking. Well, the good news is that, as I said, there's congressional action on this. This initiative also builds on um, something called the Strategic or the Stabilization Assistance Review that has already pick it, picked up some of these recommendations across state aid and DOD. You know, it enables for more cost effective, uh, more efficient action, and that's of great interest to this administration, understanding the importance of burden sharing. Okay, Nancy Limbo from the U.S. Institute of Peace, thanks very much for coming to join us. Nice to be here. In two days' time, Kim Jong-un will have made history by traveling to Russia for his first ever meeting with Russian, 